Shalom on the Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Assembly. Okay, let's see. Got the dates wrote down here. I've been thinking about everything yeah. else today. The word. Today is the 17th day of the 10th month of the year 5783 mm -hmm. as we discern the set-apart calendar. Again, we keep the full moon as the new moon. So if this be your first time tuning in, as we're getting a lot of new subscribers on YouTube and, you know, uh, more people following on Facebook. So praise Yahuwah for the growth that we're seeing on the Internet. So today is also the uh, 13th day of January 2024 on the Gregorian calendar. Today's lesson is entitled The Father of Creation, which we believe is... What you know, what most know is the Tetragrammatron, whether you pronounce, whether some say Yahua from the Paleo Hebrew, some say Yahweh from the more modern Hebrew, oh, some even say yeah. Yehovah from that Jehovah. more, yeah. or, and Jehovah, if they stick in with more with the English. I was like, brother, accidentally, nope, quit. No, I guess it not Wasn't you, it was probably a neighbor. <laughs> Sound, heard the car alarm going yeah. off, so... Want to make sure we weren't disturbing anybody. So again, we're talking about the Father, Yahuwah, that created all things mm -hmm. that were created. And the name of the message, again, is the Father of creation is in control. And if you're wondering why we're two weeks off, I started to say that and I shifted gears as far as we're off as far as what you might keep to calendar, okay? Okay. It's because we keep that full moon as a new moon. And if you want to know why we do that, I share on my Facebook page, again, Bob Farr, okay, that every day it's called Signs in the Heavens. And it really breaks down good. Brother Eric and I put that together and of why we do that. Again, we're not saying we're right and you're wrong. We're just saying this is why we're convicted to do it the way that we're doing it. And unless we could see some scripture you know, evidence, not opinion on it to change, we're going to probably, we will continue keeping it that way. And we'll be keeping the Passover, the daytime portion this year on April the 8th. Okay. And April the 8th, there's going to be a total eclipse of the sun. And Southern Illinois is right in the epicenter, mm -hmm. right where we're at. So there'll be many, many people. We'd like to invite you to come down Keep the Passover with us if you're so inclined, okay? Or just come down and experience it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event. In 2017, or was it 2016, brother, we had the last total eclipse? 17, I think you said. I think it's 17. Years ago. I remember it, but I sometimes forget what mm -hmm. year it was. We had that, and it was amazing. And there was over 30,000 people other than the people that live here in Southern Illinois for that eclipse, okay? It, they had the SIU Carbondale Arena sold out for people to come down and sit and see mm -hmm. it from that vantage point. So if you're interested in seeing that once in a lifetime event, I suggest you start making reservations for that early because there's, go there's gonna be enormous amount of people because there won't be another total solar eclipse in our area for a while. For a while. Wow. I'm not going to say exactly because there's different mm -hmm. information uh, on the internet, but we again like to invite you that. We're going to go ahead and, and stand and face Jerusalem, the place where Yahuwah chose to place his name there. And we're going to open in prayer and then we're going to jump right in on this lesson. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. And again, Father, we thank you for the breath of life for the opportunity to see a new day. Every day is a blessing, Father, that you've given us in this life and an opportunity to share your word with others, Father, to plant seeds for the harvest. Father, we also thank you for mostly, Father, for your precious son or your Ben, Yahushua HaMashiach or Jesus the Christ, for sending him to die for the sins of the world to give us an opportunity at salvation and also that opportunity to be grafted into that commonwealth of Israel, to understand that we have to be Israel to re receive those covenants of promise, Father, and that we have to be in your covenant to keep those. 
And Father, with all the turmoil and everything that's going on in the world, Father, help keep us rem- help us to remember and keep ourselves centered that you are always in control and whatever's going on was within your will. And you're using that to bring forth your new creation. We're going to see the Hamashiach, Yahushua, come back when he comes back. He himself said, no man knows the day or the hour of the coming of the Son of Man, referring to himself as the Son of Man. Father, we, we understand that. We need to be focused on being centered and, and correcting ourselves according to your word, Father, according to your Torah, and realize that you are in control. And Father, we again, we ask that you give us the words to say and that they be your words and not ours. Send that extra anointing or that unction of that Ruach HaKadosh, your Holy Spirit of promise. Open hearts and minds, Father, to your word and to your truth. Help us to get in covenant with you. Father, again, we ask that you would continue to lead us and teach us daily. And again, we thank you for providing all our day-by-day needs for our health and our opportunity, our ability to continue. And Father, we also ask that you would give the peace that passes all the understanding to those that are lost loved ones or that are floundering and, and feel like giving up. Father, help them to continue and endure to the end. And we ask all these things in your precious son, Yahushua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Christ name. Amen. Amen. No, all right. Yep, we're going to jump right in in Psalms 102. And we're going to read verses 18 through 28 to kick this off. All right. Psalms 102, verse 18. This This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be create be created shall praise the Most High. Yes, sir. For he has looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven. Did Yahuwah behold the earth? Now, it should be uh, very rel- evident here that this is talking about the Father that's looking down. Obviously, we know it's not for everyone. Okay? Just be praying about that all the time because... Yahuwah will not, or Yahweh, or Yehovah will not give his glory to another, okay? And our Hamashiach, our Messiah, Yahushua, was constantly referring to himself as son of man, as he was referred to as a prophet like unto Moses or Moshe, and we can't be taking that glory or that honor from the Father. We need to make sure we're an understanding on that. Go ahead, and brother. He was glorified yep. when he was resurrected. Yes, resurrected. he was. And he and then when he went up, when mm-hmm. he was resurrected and he met with Yahuwah in the in the heavens, he became a life-giving spirit. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and and then first thing he did was come down and breathed on his disciples at that time and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. He, he said, I give unto you as it was given unto me. And he said, "Go." Then he, I send you out as I have been sent out. So important to understand that. Go ahead, brother. Okay, verse twenty. Verse twenty. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, free those that are appointed uh-huh. to death. Why would they be appointed to death? Because of sin. Okay. Anyone that sins is going to be appointed to death. But our Hamashiach Yahusha, or our Messiah, was sent to free the prisoners that were appointed. Go ahead, brother. 21, to, to declare the name of Elohim in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. Yes, sir. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the mighty one. Okay. And in the, in the in, he's reading from the translation in the Septuagint. We want to keep reminding you that some people might think we're mis... No, because the Septuagint is important to be able to understand and correlate back and forth between the Hebrew Masoretic text to get the full meaning of these scriptures. And in, in here it says to declare the name, in Hebrew it says to declare the name of Yahuwah. In the Septuagint it says Elohim. We know Yahuwah is Elohim, okay? Mm-hmm. And his Ruach is part of that, and that's right. where the plurality goes. And it says 
And so it, it says, and then it says the mighty one in 22, it says when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the mighty one, we know who the mighty one is. It's Yahuwah. Neither mm -hmm. one of these are incorrect. Okay. They're both correct. Go ahead. He, he, verse 23, he weakened my strength in the way he shortened my days. Okay. So he weakened his strength. This, this goes back to Adam. Okay. If Adam would have continued to keep to follow Yahuwah and his commandments at that time and not re rebelled against him, he wouldn't have had his days shortened. And he even told it right there in, in Genesis that his days were shortened and that he would die. Okay, go ahead, brother. 24, I said, oh, my, oh, my mighty one. Yes, sir. Take me not away in the midst of my days. Your years are throughout all generations. So in other words, let me live to the fullness of my years. This is all of our prayer. We, any of us, we can get hit by a car or anything could happen. Okay, go ahead, brother. Of old has, has you laid the foundation of the earth, and mm -hmm. the heavens are the work of your hands. And, and it's important to give the Most High, to give Yahuwah credit for laying the foundations of the earth. If we give that to another we're taking yeah. away his honor, his glory. Go ahead. of Hebrews 1.10. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. Verse 26. They shall perish, but you shall endure. Re or remain. Yea, yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shall you change them, and they shall be changed. This is talking about Hebrews 1.11. So these two were mm -hmm. quoted in order here. And it's talking about we're going to die. Okay, our Messiah died, okay, and then he we, he was risen from the dead by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to stand at the right hand of the Father, okay? And then at that point in time, he when he was meeting him in the air, he received that glorification and again became a life-giving thing. And it's talking about us in the same way as our, everybody that doesn't come through Yahushua HaMashiach or the Messiah, is going to end up dying, and at the second resurrection, they're going to be dead. Okay, they're going to be put, suffer this what's known as the second death and enter the lake of fire. But we need to be able to understand that's going to happen to everyone except those that are grafted into Israel and and, and endure to the end. Go ahead, brother. Uh, verse 12, this one's verse, quoting 12. Go ahead. Verse 27, but you are the same, and your years shall have no end. Whose years? Not Messiah's. He was born in Bethlehem. This is talking about the Most High, Yahuwah, the Father, uh, the Father of all creation. Go ahead. The children of your servants shall continue, and their seed or descendants yes, shall sir. be established before you. Yep. Generation after generation after generation. Now we're going to go to Psalm, Psalm 100. 100. I'll just flip back one page on this on this book here. Yep. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord or the Mighty One. Yep. All you lands, mm -hmm. or your, the earth. And we know you who is our mm -hmm. Mighty One. Go ahead. To so serve the Mighty One with gladness, come before His presence with singing. Yes, sir. Know that Yahuwah, He is. Knowing that the master, he is Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Amen. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yet we are Yahuwah's sheep who, how? Through Yahushua HaMashiach, yep. our Messiah. Go ahead. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And that's what we need to make sure we're addressing the Father. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. For Yahuwah is good. His mercy is, is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Okay. Isaiah 45. Turn over to Isaiah 45. Starting in verse 5. <laughs> Isaiah 45, starting in verse 5. I'm there. It says, I, Yahuwah, and there is none else, there is no God or, or mighty one beside me. I girded you, though you has not known me. Now, now notice what it's being saying here. I mean, this doesn't make any sense with a lot of the doctrines of saying this is our Messiah back here speaking. Okay? 
you got some real, you know, theological problems or issues right here. It says, I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. Okay, in the English translation, there is no mighty one or, you know, Elohim beside me. I gird you through, though you have not known me. Messiah told us no, no one's ever seen his face or heard his voice. Now, how does that make we any sense? We have a spokesman of the Father. He got a spokesman. That's yeah. exactly right, brother. I'm glad you said that like that. It's, it's his Ruach. It's his Holy Spirit that was his messenger that mm. spoke for him. And this is the Ruach speaking. It's in red in his sword Bible. And it's letting you, he's speaking for Yahuwah. And he said, there's none beside him. Mm -hmm. You see, Yahuwah's Ruach is his inner being. So it's one. There's no Elohim right. beside him. If you start saying that's Messiah and he's back here, you got a real theological problem with that. And that's why Trinitarianism is untrue. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. There is none else, okay, because the Messiah was not yet came to be. See, he was preparing a body mm -hmm. for our Messiah. It is Yahushua, our Yahushua Mahamashiach is the body that he prepared for his Ruach. And that should be plain when that spirit, that Ruach HaKadosh, came down upon him and remained upon him, and it said, that was a declaration, it said, to John or Johan. It said, today, this you are my son today. Okay, get that. It's a proclamation that when that spirit came on him, he became Emmanuel or the mighty one with us. Amen. Okay, he wasn't born that. He became that. Go ahead, brother. I form the light and create darkness genesis 1 we know he says that go ahead i bro. make peace and create evil i yahuwah do all these things. creates even evil okay yep. that is not talking about our messiah go ahead brother drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness yes let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation mm -hmm. and let righteousness spring up together i yahuwah have created created it and he created everything that was created. And it was created for our Messiah, okay? But it's also created for all of us that are part of his body, the body of Yahushua HaMashiach. Go ahead, brother. Go on to him that strives with his maker. <laughs> yes. Let let the potsherd dry, strive with the potsherds of the earth. Mm -hmm. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, what makest you or your work? He ha has no hands. See, and th th this is, you should start being able to put this together. What is pot shards made out of or pottery? It's made out of clay, clay, dirt, okay? Our Hamashiach came in the flesh, okay? So he was like, came like the earth. It says, woe unto him that strives with its maker. Messiah didn't do that. He always gave up the glory and the honor to his father. He said, my father in the heavens or the Shamayim is greater than I. He said, I go to my God, my most high and to your most high. Okay. What part of that is understand? Woe unto the pot shard, that sliver of clay that strives with its maker. He's, and it says, with the pot shards of the earth. Every one of us that have a physical body that came in the flesh are pot shards of the earth. It says, and so it says, shall the clay say to him that fashioned it? See, it doesn't make sense for Messiah to be this, okay? What makes you or your work, he have no hands. Go ahead, brother. Uh, ten. ten. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, what begetteth you? Or to the woman, what has you brought forth? See, you can't take that away from the Most High. He's proclaiming it right here. Who is it? No one has the right to take that honor, that glory he's talking about. Go ahead. Thus bro. saith Yahuwah, the Holy One of Israel, yes, sir. and his maker, mm -hmm. ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Now think about that. His sons, plural here, okay? Ben in Hebrew, which is, can be either plural or singular in a form, okay, and, or speak of plural or singular things, okay, 
and concerning the work of my command, all his sons wasn't just Messiah. You go back and read in the book, the gospel of Mark, you'll see the lineage and, and the last one mentioned as son of God there was our Hamashiach Yahushua, and now we are part of his body. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, pay attention to the next two verses. Yes, sir. Right here. Verse 12, I have made the earth and created man upon it. Yes, sir. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. Yes, sir. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives. Not for price, no reward, saith Yahuwah of the multitudes. Now, who do you think he's referring to? Potentially <laughs> all of us, okay, but yeah. mo directly to our Yahushua HaMashiach mm -hmm. that has not yet been born, okay? Yep. It says, I have raised him up in righteousness, okay? Yes, sir. And I will direct all his ways. That's why he is the Torah, the walking, mm -hmm. talking, right rulings. He will build my city, talking about New Jerusalem, okay, preparing it, okay? And he will let go my captives, not for price nor reward, thus saith Yahuwah of the multitudes, or so both in Hebrew. Go ahead. Verse 14, thus saith Yahuwah, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto you, and they shall be yours. They shall come after you in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto you. They shall make supplication unto you, saying, Surely Yahuwah is in, in you, and there is none else. There is no Elohim. Yes, sir. Now, think about what's being said here. This is so important to understand these precepts that he's laying out. This is thus saith Yahuwah. He's saying all the labor of the Egyptians, the merchandise of the Ethiopia, the Sabians, men of stature, will come over unto you, talking about Israel, okay? And they shall be, your, be yours, okay? And they shall come after you in chains. They will come over you, okay? So they're going to come over them at a time, but at the end, they're going to end up being subject, those that oppressed Israel, okay? And they will fall down unto you, okay? Now, I had someone say something to me in a comment that would I bow down to our Messiah? Well, I certainly will, and especially when he's reigning over the whole earth, and every knee will bow at that time. But when his thousand years is over, he's going to turn that kingdom over to the Father, 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, and when he turns it over to the Father, his knee's going to bow to the Father. Okay, this is not anything new, and, and, and we definitely will, but, you know, he didn't have people all bowing down to him at that time. He kept pointing them up to the Father. Okay, and that's what's in, what we need to be doing, too. And again, he said there's none else beside him. He's the representative. Messiah. Of the yes, sir. The Messiah is his representative. That's the key right there. Yep. Should have been translated that way. Oh, well, yes. And and he comes back, King of kings and, and Lord, Lord of lords. lords. He had his, on his thigh written yep. the word yep. of Elohim. Exactly. And that's because of that Ruach, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you got to get that. To, he, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And it right. wasn't of that time. But when he comes back next time, it is going to his kingdom is going to be of this world. But then there's going to be a new mm -hmm. world, new heaven and new earth. Where the Father and the Lamb, where the where Elohim and the Lamb are in the right. temple. Okay, we got to understand. We understand all that when you read Revelation. You see the <clears> Father, <throat> you see Elohim and the Lamb. Yes, Elohim you do. And the Lamb. And Elohim again is the Father, Yahuwah, mm -hmm. and His inner being. Okay. Yes, sir. Verse fifteen. Verily, you are a mighty one, the highest yourself. You, O Yahuwah of Israel, the Savior. Mm -hmm. They they shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They should go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Okay, we don't want to make anything or anybody an idol. The Most High is who we worship and Him only. Okay, you got to remember that. He, listen to what He said. Truly, you are the Mighty One that hideth us 
O Elohim, of a, a savior of Israel, the, the savior of Israel. Okay. Mm -hmm. He says, they, all those that oppress them, shall be ashamed and also confounded in the end. All of them, they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. That's, and that doesn't matter whether they were the physical nation of Israel and they made idols. Read the book. They did. Just not all of them, some of them. Okay. And all of those are going to be confounded and confused because they did not give the glory to the Most High, the Father that created everything. Go ahead, brother. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. And yes, sir. And is equivalent to Elohim. Yes, sir. Representative. Mm -hmm. With an everlasting salvation, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Yep. Now, listen to that. But Israel doesn't say all nations. Okay. There'll be all nations that are within Israel at that time. But Israel will be saved in, in, your, in Elohim. Mm -hmm. Okay, with an everlasting eternal life salvation, you will not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. In other words, we're going to be going into that that new heaven and new earth uh, world without end. Go ahead, brother. 18, for thus saith Yahuwah that created the heavens. Yes, sir. Yahuwah himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it. Not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. Now, see, from 15 all the way down to the very end of 18, it was in black. So it was Isaiah speaking. And then when he got done, when he got done, he said, he's telling you, thus saith Yahuwah. He says, I am Yahuwah, and there is none mm -hmm. else. He's quoting Yahuwah. Go ahead. Uh, 19. Mm-hmm. 19, I have not spoken in secret mm -hmm. in a dark place of the earth. I, I said not unto the seed of Jacob. The descendants of Jacob. Seek, seek you and me and seek you me in vain. I, Yahuwah, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. So when he gives his right rulings, his Torah, that's when he's declaring things that is right. And he did that through a mm -hmm. representative the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, that resided on our Messiah and spoke through him. So the descendants of Jacob don't have to be just the physical descendants. We're all descendants of Jacob through that commonwealth of Israel. Yeah. He says, seek you me in vain. You are if you're not seeking him directly, and we got to come through the Messiah. I, Yahuwah, speak righteousness. And I declare that which is right. Go ahead. Assemble yourselves that come. Draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. So do you think that was any different for those of, it, of this nation of Israel back then when they had idols and set up high places and went unto them? It, it was no different for them. They, they had no understanding. Okay. It says, assemble yourselves together and come. He's talking about assemble yourself as a nation, which includes all the set apart assemblies, but assemble ourselves together through all those things. Draw near together. You that escape of the nations, all nations, how they escape and they're becoming part of the commonwealth of Israel and they're escaping that eternal second death. They have no knowledge that set up the wooden, or the graven images, and they pray unto Elohim, little Elohim, that cannot save, that do nothing, idols. Go ahead, brother. Tell, verse 21, tell, tell ye, and tell you, and bring bring them near. Yes, sir. Yea, let, let them take counsel together, who have declared this from the ancient time. Yep, declared the truth, the prophets. Go ahead, brother. Who had told it from that time. Have not I, Yahuwah, and there is no... L or L mighty one, mighty one else beside me, mm -hmm. a just mighty one and a savior. There is none beside me. None. So the only way that that makes sense is when you understand the Father and His inner being are yeah. one. Okay, and there is a unity of the Spirit to our Hamashiach now, our Messiah. But there's also a unity of a Spirit for us. Again, John, the Gospel of John, chapter fourteen, explains that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 22, look unto me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, 
I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. None else. Go ahead, brother. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. And in the end, ultimately, that's what it is. That's what this is talking about, every knee shall bow. When we bow to the Messiah and he has his Ruach in him during his millennial reign, we're bowing to the Father, mm -hmm. you know, to Yahuwah. That's what this that's is right. all about. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, if you're bowing to Messiah, we're bowing down to Yahuwah. Yes, we are. Yahuwah's because spirit's in him. And it's in us, too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Surely say, surely say one say in the most high have i righteousness or in the mighty one which is the most high yes sir will, have i i righteousness and strength even to him shall men come and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed see we got to come to yahuwah how do we do that through yahushua hamashiach through the messiah right. we have to do that because israel Israel as a nation was cut off because of going after idols. Right. Okay. So now all we have now, we have that commonwealth of Israel or that spiritual Israel that the, they, Israel, Israel were the seed that came to produce the seed or Hamashiach to bring all nations into that commonwealth of Israel, including yep. the natural seed. Go ahead. Last verse, and the mighty one shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. All the seed or descendants. Okay, Isaiah 55, starting at verse 3. I'm there. there. Mm -hmm. 55, Isaiah 55, starting at verse 3. It says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Here and your your soul or your being shall live. Yes, sir. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now think what this is so deep, guys. You just can't top surface this. He says, turn your ear, incline your ear, turn it towards Yahuwah and come unto me. Here and your being shall live. If you, if you don't turn unto him, you're going to perish in the lake of fire. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're not going to have eternal life. And I will make an everlasting covenant or agreement with you, even the sure mercies of Dawid or David, King David here. What is he talking about? See, that Davidic covenant that he made with David that he would bring, he would always have a Descendant sitting on the throne in Israel. The ultimate uh, conclusion in that is our Yahushua Hamashiach ruling and reigning for a thousand mm -hmm. years and us being the body of him, the right. priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. That's what this is talking about. Go ahead, Verse brother. For behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. Yes, sir. A leader and a commander to the people. He did that with the nation of Israel and he did that mm -hmm. with David. And he ultimately is doing that with his with our Messiah, yes. Yahushua HaMashiach. Go ahead. Five, behold, you you shall call a nation that you know us not. Now, that's talking about not just the physical seed. Go ahead, brother. And nations that knew not you shall run unto you because of Yahuwah uh, your Elohim. Yes, sir. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Okay, so that everybody's going to turn to Yahuwah. Okay, that's the father. Now we have to do that now through Yahushua Hamashiach. That don't mean they're the same. Okay, brother. Six, seek, seek you the most high while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. See, again, didn't say seek you, Yahuwah. That's what it's talking about. The, the most, most high, high yep. while he is still able to be found. There's going to be a time when it's when all grace or uh Favor is going to come to an end. In other words, no one after that time will find that favor with the Most High. So we have to turn to him now while we still can, again, through our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. Let the wicked forsake his way and, his, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Yes, sir. And let him return unto the Most High. Yes, sir. And he will have mercy upon him and to our Elohim, for he will abundantly pardon. Yes, he will. That promise has always been out there. But the Messiah had to be offered that Lamb of Elohim for that to come to perfection. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Yes. Neither are your ways my ways, saith you. We always got to remember that whatever's going on out here in this big wide uh, world that we live in, it's all 
his way. Okay, he's in control. Go ahead, brother. For, verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth. Yes, sir. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. So when someone asks you, why would a, 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 a an Elohim that has love and mercy and kindness let all these things happen? Because his ways are higher than our ways. I, I was talking to a, a brother the other day, and I call him, I'll call him my brother. He's a Mennonite. OK, and he, he, he just he really wrestled with that when he lost his wife. OK, and that was my answer is you know, whose ways are hard, higher than our ways. Who knows what would have, you know, fell upon this woman later if you wouldn't have you know, ended her. OK, he didn't do it, but he allowed it to happen. OK, so his ways are higher than our ways. All this stuff that's going on out in the world right now. Remember, he's in control, yeah. and his ways are higher than our ways. It's going to bring perfection in the end. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not, not there, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And I just remembered what we just read earlier. I had to point that out. Remember, he creates good and evil. Mm -hmm. He even creates evil. So even the evil that we see out there in the world, you who is allowing that because it's going to bring on righteousness, okay, in the end. but And it's all refining us because we have to re endure to the end in his right rulings, his righteousness. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Yes, sir. It shall not return unto me void or empty, but it shall ac accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So everything that's happened, you got to apply that into what we just read there. So my word, and he's taught, and his word is speaking of his ruach here, his representative. It be that goes forth mm -hmm. out of my mouth because no one's ever heard his voice or seen his form at any time. That was his mouth, his inner being. Okay. It, it will not return unto me void or for nothing, worthless. Okay. But it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Go ahead, brother. Okay, now we're going to go to Exodus. Uh, now we're going to read upon uh, pestilence and plagues. We're going to kind of go through mm -hmm. examples. Just like we, now. Go we ahead, just lay down the foundation mm -hmm. here in the beginning. So yes, now sir. we're going to get kind of the heart of the lesson. Exodus. Exodus chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Getting right back to the heart of the matter here. These are all, even though these are literal happenings, they're also idioms of things to come. you yes, got to be able to read. It's spiritual. It's not just physical. Uh, what did, would you say, Exodus Ex, 5? Yeah. Question, why are all these bad things happening? Well, yep. what, what, let's read about what, what, why do these things happen back, back here in Exodus. No different now. Go ahead, brother, whenever you get ready. Exodus, Exodus chapter 5, starting in verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahuwah of Israel, mm -hmm. Let my people go, that they may... That they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. See now, and and we know that Israel was slaves in Egypt at that time, and they did made their bricks. They helped build all their mm -hmm. uh, great things that they feel that they built at that time, all idols. Okay, and and, and he's and he's telling them right here. Okay, and, and afterward, again Moses, Moshe, and Aaron, the witnesses, examples of Yahuwah and his ruach went in and told Pharaoh, Thus mm -hmm. saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast. Now, his feasts are laying out all of prophecy to the very end, to the new heaven and new earth. That's why he's doing these things, and he's using it to his glory to show these people who's in control. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2, And Pharaoh said, Who is the Most High, Yahuwah the Most High? Yes, sir. Should I that I should obey his voice to let the Israel go. I know not Yahuwah, neither will I let Israel go. Do you think that's any different today with all those that deny the Most High, that don't believe in him at all, and they're just acting? Because they're the flesh, and they're the world. So that's what they're doing. 
And all the things that are happening are to show them. Okay, so that they may repent. Go ahead, brother. And they said, The God of the Hebrews, or the Almighty Yahuwah, hath met with us. Mm -hmm. Let us go, we pray you, three days' journey unto the desert, and sacrifice unto the Mighty One, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with swords. See, and that's what we got to remember. At least he does that to us. See, he's going to fall on Egypt that way, but he's not going to fall on the Israelites. Okay, go okay, ahead. Now I'm going to read. Now this is uh, this pestilence here, and I looked this up a while mm -hmm. back. Okay, Hebrew sixteen ninety eight. Okay, it says here this plague is a dreaded disease similar to the bu bubonic plague in the uh, Middle Ages. It mm -hmm. was likely carried by rats, fleas, and produced tumors on mm -hmm. an infected person the word is also used as as the most dreaded threat of the of you of the most high against his people mm -hmm. they got leviticus 26 25 and numbers 14 12. yep the prophets use this word frequently to predict the coming judgment and destruction as the common phrase sword famine and plague mm -hmm. and they got jeremiah 21 9 and 32 Jeremiah 38 2 and Ezekiel 6 and 11. There's many, many places that talk about and, it. And I mean, and these plagues have went, see, you got to understand they're talking about the bubonic plague as an example, example right. of those things. Okay. Right. And those things been going on forever. And that's because, and you just got to remember you who is in control and innocent people do. But it's all to bring on his glory in the end. Okay, okay, Exodus, let's go another place. Exodus 9, starting in verse 13. Read a couple of verses mm -hmm. here. 13. Cha Exodus chapter 9, verse 13. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him. This is all in red. Mm -hmm. in red. Thus saith Yahuwah. Elohim of, of the Hebrews, mm -hmm. let my people go that they may serve me. Now, and it, that's going on right now. Okay, it, again, you know, right now, he said, the signals already went out, come out of her, my people. Okay, no different Egypt is corrupt. Same thing now that corrupt people that say they follow the most high and they are not. They're coming out. He's saying, let my people go. Okay, be aware of what's going on around you and get yourself right with Yahuwah. Amen. Because the time of the end is upon us, whether we die tomorrow or what happens. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon your heart mm -hmm. and upon your servants and upon your people that you may as know that there is none like me in all earth. And he did, and he's done that. We just recently went through a big plague, okay? A lot of people died, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember who's in control. Go ahead, brother. For verse 15, for now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite you with your people with pestilence and you shall be cut off from the earth. He talking about you being dead when you're cut off from the earth here, yeah. folks. Go ahead. And there's yeah. a lot of people died. And some didn't, though, didn't they? One more verse, 16. And in that, in the very deed of this cause have I raised you up for to show in you my power. Hallelujah. And my name may be declared throughout all the earth. And that's mm -hmm. why Messiah was a prophet like unto Moses. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go into Numbers. Another example here, Numbers 14. Yep, Numbers 14. Let's don't get caught up in thinking that man's in control when he's not. Numbers 14? Yep. Numbers 14, starting at verse 7. I'm there. Okay. Numbers 14, verse 7. And they, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. Okay, and this is when they were sending out the witnesses, the three witnesses to go out and look at check. Oh, no, not say one from every tribe, 12 witnesses. Okay, they were getting ready to send them out and they, and they go through it. And it's a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. I'm just trying to set the mm -hmm. stage. Go ahead. If Yahuwah or the mighty one delights in us, then he will bring us into this land. And give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Now, this was talking about the land of Israel. 
But the, this is all Hebrew idioms. And it's the mm -hmm. same while it's going into the new heaven and new earth and where Yahuwah and the Lamb right. will rule forever. we got to get that. And that's the same thing here. It says, if Yahuwah delights in us, how's he going to delight in us? If we come through his Messiah, okay, and then we keep his commandments, and he's going to give us the covenants of promise, then will he bring us into this land and give it to us. And it truly will be a land which flows with milk and honey. It, there will be no evil. Go ahead, brother. Okay, uh, what verse did I leave? And you left off in eight, we're in nine. Nine, okay, in verse nine, only rebel not against the Most High, yes, against sir. Yahuwah. Neither fear you the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. He's, and notice what he said. Yahuwah told him to trust him. Mm -hmm. He would send his hornet in front of them to fight them and clear out that land. He's talking about his Ruach. Okay, his, his Holy Spirit yep. to fight for them. Only do not rebel against Yahuwah. How did they, how did they rebel? Having idols, not keeping his his covenant, his agreements, the first five books of Moses. Okay, he's not doing what every word that presided from his mouth. He says, because all those people in that land are bred for us. In other words, they don't stand a chance. Yep. You'll devour them. And their defense has left them. The only defense they could have had was Yahuwah. Okay, and Yahuwah is with us now. Mm -hmm. Okay, fear them not. Go ahead. Verse 10, but all the congregation wanted to stone them with stones. Mm -hmm. And the glory of Elohim appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. See, and the glory of Elohim mm -hmm. is his Ruach HaKadosh that lit up that, that the tabernacle of the congregation. I like that translation here. Mm -hmm. Tabernacle of the congregation, temporary dwelling place for the congregation. Okay, because Yahuwah does not live in buildings made of hands. He came down upon it. Okay, before the Ben or the sons of Israel. Go ahead. Okay, I okay verse eleven, and most I on my other King James version and a couple of Bible apps I checked out. And this mm -hmm. verse eleven. I'm going to read this on a, in most translations of the King James. I'm not saying all of them. Okay, because in this, in they, this, they're different. In this sword Bible translation that we have, which is the King James, it says it a little differently. You know, which let me read something here. This is a verse eleven, and it says, "And who has said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will, will it be this word that they got E R E? It says, Error. They believe they believe me for for all the the signs which I have showed among them." I don't know what your translation says. If you have a King James, it might, it's, it's. According to whether you got the yeah, old. And so it's like, so not knowing what that word is, you know what I mean? And there's other translate, other words. I look them up I, and I looked it up or I look in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and basically Septuagint, I checked it out in the Hebrew. But I'm going to read this and this happened to be the, the King James version I got have now in the sword Bible. Which is a little more modern. Go okay. ahead, brother. I'm going to read this. Verse 11 says, And Yahuwah said unto Moses, or the Lord, okay, unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? Yes, sir. And how long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. And that's the miracles that they showed, and they still didn't believe. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's asking there. That's a very good translation, and it agrees with the Septuagint. Right, see, because the, there's so many errors, you know. That in translation. Are, translations, and that's all we're trying to do is. Yep. Well, you, you can't just say, you know, in any case, oh, the, the King James Bible is without error. There's none of them that are without error. Yeah. They're all translations, and they go to the person that makes the translation. Sometimes what they say is not incorrect. Right. It must be hard to understand. Something, it's just hard to understand sometimes. And we like, all go back to the Strong's. Anybody that says they don't, then they're not really studying at all. They're just reading right. this, okay? Because you, if you don't understand something and the verbiage that it's in, in, in an old translation, then you're just saying, okay, I just don't understand that. But if you go right. back and, and search it up in the Hebrew or in the Greek, whichever the case may be, then you're clarifying, and that's proving all things. Not doing that is not proving all things. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8. 
First Kings oh. chapter eight. First Kings chapter eight. Starting at verse thirty one. Examples here. Just keep going, you know, yep. to get the message here. Who's in control? Okay, verse 31. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before your altar in this house, and hear you in heaven, and do and judge your servants, Condemning the wicked, which he does, to bring his way upon his head, yes, sir, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. Now, now, this is something we need to really stop and consider in our heads. See, all these times, everybody always makes all these excuses. You know, I didn't do this. Somebody else made me do that. That's a big problem because you, who is the only judge? Okay, then hear you in heaven talking about the Shamayim, talk about our our Father Yahuwah and do and judge your servants condemning the wicked. He's going to do that. So if you're going through trials and tribulations, take responsibility for your error. We all fall short of the mark to bring his way upon his head. So if we're getting blessed, then we, we, we can see that we're doing the righteous thing. But if we're not, we need to look and see what we need to correct in our life. Sometimes it's just time and chance. Sometimes it's correction. Go ahead. Verse 33, when, when your people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against you, mm -hmm. and shall turn again to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication unto you in this house. See, and, and it's, so it's always, there's no grace is not a new thing. Because mm -mm. Israel was constantly rebelling and doing that but whenever they would repent and turn back to him he, he would you know turn back to them and that's what we have to remember and we got to honestly agree that a lot of things happen to us are of our own doing go ahead brother verse 34 then hear you in heaven and forgive the sin of your people yes Israel. Sir. if we if we if we confess it Go ahead, yeah. brother. And bring them again and unto the land which you gave us unto their father. And he's making that promise to you right now that Amen. if you'll do that and you'll relieve, walk away from sin, truly repent, he's going to bring you back to the place of there. And that's in the first resurrection, folks. That's the promise. Go ahead. 35. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you. If they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin when you has afflicted them. So again, when there was no rain, who was he afflicting? He was afflicting his people, Israel, right. because they had turned away from him. And we now are his people, Israel, through our Hamashiach, Yahusha. We have to turn again to him and his ways or we're going to keep getting what we're getting. Go ahead, brother. Even prophesied in uh, Zechariah in a thousand year millennial, if yes. you don't go up to Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles. Right, even then, during the millennium. And not give them any rain, any right. nation. And, and you know what? Yep. There's going to be a time when he shuts off grace. This is also a Hebrew idiom mm -hmm. showing that it's going to call upon him while today is still today. Because one point it's going to be too late. Go ahead, brother. Verse 36. Then hear you in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants. Yes, sir. And of the of your people Israel, that you teach them the good way therein they should walk and give rain upon your land, which you has given to your people for an inheritance. And if you're part of that commonwealth of Israel, he's going to put mm -hmm. rain on you. Focus on repentance, Amen. on what you need to do to get closer to him. Turn to him. Okay, and he'll turn to you. Go ahead. Verse 37. If there be in, in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or, or there be a caterpillar, if, there, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, what, whatever plague, whatever sickness there be. Yep, it's, gonna, it, it, it's all going to be on your, on your own fault. That's what he's saying. Go Verse ahead. Verse 38. What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all your people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart. Own heart, doesn't it? That's talking about his mind, will, and emotion. Yeah. What, you know, how he feels inside, you know, whether he's 
freely gives to Yahuwah and does his commandments or he doesn't. Go ahead. And spread forth his hands toward this house. Yes, sir. Then hear you in heaven, your dwelling place, and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart you know is. Now, do you think that's any different now with our Messiah than it was then? You still got to repent and turn from your wicked Amen. ways. Go ahead, brother. For you, even you only know us the hearts of all the children of the men. And this is talking about the men mm -hmm. or the sons of the men. Go ahead. Verse 40, that they may fear, revere you all the days that they live in the land which you gave us unto our fathers. So you see, it comes back to us giving him the honor, uh -huh. the glory that the father demands. Okay, we got to give it to him. Go ahead, Verse brother. 41, moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of your people, Israel, but comes out of a far country for your name's sake. So he comes to Yahuwah because of their name. Israel has to do with Yahuwah. Go ahead, brother. For they shall hear of your great name and of your strong, like your strong hand yes, and sir. of the, your stretched out arm. That's why our witness is so important. It's not what you say; it's what you do. Everybody's watching you. Go ahead. When brother. when he shall come and pray toward this house, hear you in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calls. To you for see we're not a stranger anymore we once were far off but now we've been brought near through the blood of our hamashiach but back here they were strangers go ahead brother for all the people of the earth may know your name yes sir. to fear you as do your people israel that's what all this was about go ahead brother and that they may know that this house which i have built it is called by your name and this is so important to understand that the Amen. reason why all the plagues and everything came on israel is because they didn't obey him and keep his commandments. And, and, and that was a sign to all the people out there too, that they wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. But when they were blessing them and they were doing righteousness, then they were blessed. Okay. Let's go to First Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21. You know, if you read Kings and Chronicles, I mean, a lot of it repeats a lot of it stuff. It does. Different details. Um, but it's important. You got to read it all because there's some words not there that's not, that would be written in one or the other. You know, some, something Kings mm -hmm. would be something. You might miss 21. something or add something you see later in right. Chronicles. Right, right. That's why it's important to read everything in context and then check it, keep reading. Right. Because here's an example. Questions that get answered. First Chronicles chapter 21, and this is what, where David messed up because mm -hmm. uh, Satan, he kind of, well, here it says. Uh, stumbling blocks, yep. Yeah, and this is where uh, say, uh, David sinned, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this was unknowingly, mm -hmm. obviously, what yeah. happened. We all do it unknowingly. But Go here ahead. at verse 1, it says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So what is that? He he, he throws stumbling blocks in front of him. Okay, mm -hmm. He wanted him to see how how mighty and powerful right. Israel was and not the Most High. Go ahead. See, I just wanted to make it a point because in Kings, I'm not sure exactly where it's at in Kings, but it says, it didn't say Satan there. It just says David was provoked to number Israel. But Satan's but, always throwing those stones. But here it says, it says who it was. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. verse 2, And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba, even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Mm -hmm. And Joab answered, the Yahuwah makes his people a hundred times so many more as they be, but my Lord, the King, Master, the King, master, the king and that's talking about David. Yeah. Are they not all my master's servants? Yes, sir. Why then does my master require this thing? Why will he be a cause to trespass to Israel. In other words, why is he going to bring this sin or this guilt upon Israel right. by numbering them? See, what he's trying to do is see how powerful David was and the kingdom. Right. And Satan is the one tempted him to do that, just like he tried to tempt Messiah when he said, if you'll bow down before me, I'll give you all these things. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4, nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Yes, sir. Wherefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. So the king got the last yeah. say. Go ahead. And Joab gave, gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. 
And all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword, and Judah was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew sword. So four hundred and seventy thousand. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And 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 this is so important to understand. And David was trying to see how mighty David was, or the nation of Israel. Yeah. Israel. Go ahead. But brother. Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable, abominable to Joab. So he didn't even call him Levi mm -hmm. and Benjamin. Okay. It says, and Yahuwah was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. Struck Israel and caused him a defeat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, and David said un unto the mighty one, Yahuwah, mm -hmm. I have sinned greatly. Because now he recognized. Mm -hmm. Because I have done this thing, but now I beg you, do away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolish. What was this? Repentance. He's turning back to Yahuwah. Amen. He had stumbled, and now he's repenting. Yahuwah is faithful to forgive. Yes, sir. But there is consequences. Go ahead, and brother. Yep, we're going to read that. And mm -hmm. Yahuwah spake unto Gad, David's seer, or his prophet, mm -hmm. saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah. I offer three. Uh, I offer you three things. Choose, choose you one of them that that I may do do it unto you. See there. That's why you know we can all. If we see things going wrong in our life, we better start realizing we need to repent. And he's given David because he's so favored. I'm gonna give you three options, but one of them is gonna be your punishment. Go ahead, brother. Uh, verse 11. eleven. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah. Choose thee, either three years of famine. This is choices now. That would be on all of Israel. Go ahead. He's given them choice: either three years of famine or three months to be destroyed before your foes, while while that the sword of your enemies overtake you, or else three days of the sword of Yahuwah or Elohim, even the pestilence in the land. And the, and the angel of the Lord, or Yahuwah, destroying throughout all the coast of Israel. So he's going to bring the Ruach down on them, and he's going to punish them and yep. destroy Israel through all. That was one of the options. Go now, ahead, now, therefore, advise yourself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. Mm -hmm. Go, he gonna, he, yep. He's been sent by the Most High. And now he's saying, okay, what do I go back with? Because he's a prophet here. Go Verse ahead, 13, and David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait or a deep distress. Yes, he was. Let me fall, fall now unto the hand of Elohim, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. Because if he gave it up and allowed the men to come yes, in sir. on him, they don't know when to stop. They're going to keep going till he's gone. Go ahead. So Yahuwah sent pestilence upon Israel, and there and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And some of them had nothing to do with that. But it, his ways are higher than our ways. Why? Uh -huh. He's not just showing Israel. Israel, he's showing the entire world how great he is. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. verse 15. And Yahuwah sent an angel or messenger. Malak. Unto Jerusalem to destroy it. Mm -hmm. And as he was destroying, Yahuwah beheld. And he repented him of the evil and said to the, the messenger mm -hmm. that dest was destroying, it's enough. Stay now your hand. And the messenger of Elohim, Yahuwah, stood by the threshing floor on and with the Jebusite. Now think about that. What did David say? He says, don't let the people come get me. Let Yahuwah, because he's most merciful. So he said, go ahead and let him send his messenger, his Moloch, okay, to destroy, because he's going to say that's enough. Evil never says that's enough. Okay, remember Yahuwah yeah. is in control. See, even even other times, <clears throat> other examples, he yes. sent evil angels. Yes, he did among the people. Even even evil spirits have confronted them and say, "I could be a lying spirit." Yep, a and, lying spirit, an evil spirit, mm -hmm. same thing. And and he allows us is if he gets they get they have to go to the Most High to get that permission to do yep. it. He created evil. When he did that, he even though it may not originally been the plan. Go Verse ahead. sixteen, and David lifted up his eyes and saw the messenger of Yahuwah stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword, sword in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. So. 
He recognized he's in repentance. He's saying, Father, that's enough. Go ahead. Okay, Second Chronicles 7. We're going to read just a couple of verses. Second Chronicles chapter 7, starting in verse 13. Yep. This is all in red again. Thus saith Yahuwah. Okay. Ver yeah, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 13. If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, mm -hmm. if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now, what is that saying? Let's get into that really good. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, no different today, mm -hmm. will do what? Humble themselves and pray, repent, turn from your wickedness, turn to Yahuwah, and do what? Seek his face. And then what? Turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from the heavens, or the Shamiim, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. That's what we need to be doing, turning to Yahuwah, praying, and, and realizing that we're bringing a lot of this on ourselves, even the people of the Most High. Go ahead, brother. Okay, we're going we're gonna to skip this one here. Mm -hmm. Let's just go over to Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Yeah, Psalm 78. I didn't know we were even getting close to an hour, brother. Yeah, I know. It goes it's going quick. I was into it. Yep. A lot of, this is a lot of meat in here. Yes, there is. Okay, Psalm 78. Skip down to Psalm 78. I'll get there. I'm like said, thinking too much. Little tweaking a little bit here, so kind of... For just, time's sake. Yeah. You know, there's always much more to read. Psalm 78, starting in verse 5. 78, verse 5, I'm there. Okay, for he established a testimony in Jacob mm -hmm. and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known, be known to their children. Now, what did he say here? He says, for he, Yahuwah, established a testimony, and Jacob was the testimony. Okay, everything they did, whether it was good or bad, it was a testimony. Okay, mm -hmm. and appointed a Torah or write rulings in Israel, which he commanded their fathers from the beginning of Israel, of the land of Israel, nation, that they should make them known to their sons. Okay, that's what this is talking about here. One generation to the next. Go ahead. Okay, verse six, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children? And most of the time when you see children here, it should have been translated men or sons. Mm -hmm. And that's right, that's because it was to the sons to teach their children. Okay? So they would teach their sons and their sons' sons, and it would go right on down the line. What did they teach them? His right rulings, his Torah, his mercy, his forgiveness, all those things. Go ahead, brother. That they might set their hope in God or, or Elohim. Yes, sir. And forget not the works of Elohim, but keep his commandments. So that they would reverence, that they would honor Yahuwah. Go ahead, brother. And verse 8, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast so every the almighty yep think about that every generation is a witness to the next okay so that the next generation might not repeat the same mistakes that's what's being yep. said and that's what's not being done people are still repeating the same mistakes yep. always blaming somebody else for whatever can sim and everything they have when it's up to you Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. Yes, they did. They turned back from following Yahuwah's commandments yep. in the day of battle. They Go kept ahead. not the covenant of Elohim yes, sir. and refused to walk in his Torah. That's why the northern tribes got cut off and mm -hmm. Jer Jeroboam was leading them at that time, which was Ephraim. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And forget, and they forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. And that's why they ended up assimilating into the other nations. Okay. Psalms 91. Good psalm to... 
when things are going bad, huh? this is a good, nice psalm to read. And who remember who's in control. Yep. We're going to read down to 16. Okay, 1 through 16. Uh -huh. Psalms 91, starting in verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you abide in his ways, you're going to be in his shadow or in his protection. Go ahead. I will say of the Most High, he is my refuge. Hallelujah. And my fortress, my Elohim, and him will I trust. And there's no Elohim beside him. Go ahead. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. See, if you only believe and keep his Amen. commandments, go ahead. He shall cover you with his feathers, and <sighs> under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your seal and buckler. You got to believe that, though, and you got to keep his commandments. Amen. You got to give him the glory, the honor. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5 You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. That means you can go to sleep at night. Even if there's a tornado warning, you Amen. don't got to worry. You got a promise. Go ahead, for brother. For the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted that noonday. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall by your side, and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You've got to believe that, folks. You really got to believe that. And if, it, if it's your time, it's your time. Time. Okay, and you if you trust in Yahuwah like that, you're giving him the glory and the honor. Anything short of that, you're not. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Yep. Because you has made Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habit your habitation because you don't got to worry about all that stuff that's going to be that way the rich yep. man's going to be the rich man and he's going to control the poor man but if you believe in the most high you're going to dwell in yeah. his habitation go ahead verse bro. 10 there shall no evil before befall you neither shall any plague come near your dwelling but you really got to give him the honor all the time if not he's yep. going to be a wit you're going to be a witness against it Go ahead. For he shall give his angels, his messengers, charge over you yes, to sir. keep you in all your, all the ways. If we just give him the glory continually, go ahead. Verse twelve: They shall they shall lift you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Hmm. We heard this before, didn't we? In Matthew chapter mm -hmm. four, when talking about to our Messiah, yeah, Satan taking mm -hmm. scripture out of out of context. context. Right. Verse thirteen. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. If you just give Yahuwah the glory and keep repenting when we fall short. Yep. Verse 14, and this is all in red now. Yahuwah. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high or exalt him because he has known my name. See, if you'll just give Yahuwah the glory... He's going to get set up his love upon you. If you have set your love upon him, therefore will he deliver you. I will set him on high because he hath not known my name. Go ahead. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and yep. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Yes, sir. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. At the end. And that's all we hope for is that salvation. We got at two the more. End. We're going to two, two more. Gonna yeah. go and finish in a Brit Hot We got to go to Acts. Acts. We're going to skip. We're going to skip Psalm 145. Saying the same. Yeah. So we're going to go right to Acts. We're going to wrap this wrap up. Wrap this up because we're getting over, but not too we're bad. Not too bad, but no. uh, I don't want to draw it out nope. too long. Nope. Let's see. Acts 17. 17. We're going to talk about the unknown God. Yep. Which we bring up quite <laughs> often. Acts 17, starting in verse 22. Mm hmm. And he's unknown to most now. Okay. Yep. And if we. Give some other one the glory of this unknown God, then we're giving away his glory. Go okay, ahead. Here's Paul, Apostle Paul. Then Paul stood, stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you, you are too superstitious. He's saying you guys are really superstitious. You're not really understanding what you're doing. Go ahead. Okay. 
for I verse twenty three for I was passed I passed by and I beheld your devotion. Mm -hmm. I found an altar unto this in inscription to the unknown mighty one mm -hmm. whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him declare I unto you so when he's talking about their devotions he's talking about their idols their worst thing objects of worship go ahead verse 24 Yahuwah that made the world and all the things therein let's 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 show you what word that is in Greek again okay and it's this upside that's got to be in front of it that's the, the signifier it says the theos which means yahuwah mm -hmm. that's where we get the name there so it says that yahuwah made the earth and all things therein seeing that he is the curios yeah the curios or the or the master of heaven yep, and earth which is yahuwah every dwelleth, time dwelleth not in temples made with hands yeah he didn't back then either so he didn't come down in the temple did he his Ruach, his inner being, his spirit was what came down. Go ahead, brother. Okay, verse 25. 25. Neither is worship with man's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth, giveth to all life and breath and all things. Yahuwah. Go ahead. And he, in verse 26, and hath made, made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And have determined the times before appointed and a bound of, of the habitation. That's Yahuwah, the Most High. That's who did all that, not our Messiah. Go ahead, brother. Verse 27, that they should seek the Most High. Yes, sir. If perhaps they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Yep, because he's right there if we call on Amen. him. Go ahead, brother. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We're also all the offspring of the Most High because he's the one that caused Adam to be. Go ahead, brother. For as much then as we are the offspring of, of Elohim. Yes, sir. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device what these people were doing they were worshiping these graven images go ahead here in verse 30 mm -hmm. and at times of this ignorance yahuwah winked at so when they didn't know any better he winked or turned his overlooked. head overlooked and now he commands all men everywhere to repent that's because of our Messiah given that opportunity to mm -hmm. be grafted in. Go ahead. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Now, notice how they put the capital <laughs> M-A-N. Yeah. He's done that through that man, talking right. about Yahushua HaMashiach, yes, or Jesus the Christ, whom he had ordained and for him to be king. In the millennial reign. Go ahead. Wherefore he hath given assurance unto all men. Yahuwah hath given assurance to all men. And that he has raised him from the dead. Yeah, Yahuwah raised Yahushua from the dead. What part of that can we mm. not understand? And verse 32. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, We will hear uh, you again of this matter. And it's the same way today. When you try to tell someone the truth, some mock you. But some of them say, I'm going to listen oh, yeah, to this again. It. Okay, that's it. Done that's all that. that. That's it. Now okay. we're going to finish in Acts 3. Yep. Acts chapter 3. This is a good finish here. Yes, it is. Been a whole good lesson. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 18. Okay, I'm there. Okay. Yeah. Acts 3, verse 18. But those things which God, and this God here is referring to, to Yahuwah, or the Theos. Right here, folks. Yep. Before it had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that, yep. that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Doesn't that make so much more sense to understand those Greek words, the yes, Theos? Sir. And it says, but those things which Yahuwah before had showed by the mouth of all his holy prophets. Yes, right this on. couldn't have been Yahushua HaMashiach back there in the Old Testament. It could not be what some call Jesus it, the Christ. His spirit. That Christ, the anointed one, should suffer. He has so fulfilled. It's happened. The man Yahushua HaMashiach had suffered. Go ahead, brother. It says, uh, verse 19, repent 
ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out yes sir when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of elohim yep now now think about that you still got to repent it's already come mm -hmm. to pass that the messiah so if you got to repent, what are you repenting from? Sin, which is transgression of the Torah. Go ahead, brother. And he shall send Jesus or Yahushua, the anointed one, mm -hmm. which before you before was preached unto you, un, unto you. By all the holy or set apart prophets. Okay. Verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of the, all things. They, and, and it has received them now. And it's waiting on the restoration of all things, which is the thousand year reign or the preparation day for eternity for the most high. Go ahead. Which Yahuwah has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The Theos is why we mm -hmm. say Yahuwah. Verse 22, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall Yahuwah your Elohim raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Now let me ask you, did Moses pre-exist in the beginning? No. If he's a prophet like unto Moses and he calls himself son of man, well, at least 80 times out of his own mouth, something must be askew with the teachings. Okay. Verse 23, and it shall come to pass that every every sore being yes, which sir. will not hear that, that prophet, prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And then when's that going to be? At the thousand at the at the end of the thousand years and the great white throne judgment. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and all those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold these days. And the word prophet here equals Moloch or messenger when, when he says it in verse 23. And it will come to pass that every being which will not hear that Moloch, so he's a messenger. That's what that's telling you. That prophet shall be destroyed from among his people. Go ahead, Verse brother. 25, you are the children of the prophet. Yes, sir. And of the covenant which Yahuwah made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And that's not just talking about in the physical nation. That's talking about the spiritual manifestation. Amen. Unto you, first God, or Yahuwah, have having raised up his son Yahusha. So how could it be the other, you know, Messiah back there? Somebody had to raise him up. Sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquity. So he sent the Messiah to help turn us away from all of our iniquities. Amen. And he sent Johann the Immerser first to, to preach repentance and baptize him. Amen. So hopefully somebody got something out of this message today. Hopefully that you could see about who we need to give honor and glory to through our Hamashiach, Yahushua, okay, our Jesus to Christ, okay? So if you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, we'd ask that you do so. And if you like this video or any of them, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And then if you really like it, share it to your Facebook page. And then don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you might be notified. And if you're interested in being here for April the 8th for that total eclipse, start making plans early. May Yahuwah bless until we meet again.